Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Amazing Tennis Podcast. In this episode, I don't have any guests. It's going to be just me. I will be talking a little bit more of who I am, actually, so you guys get to know me a little bit better. Just a little bit about my story, also my playing history, my coaching, and why I started the podcast. So, who am I? My name is Emma Burkage Bucko. Uh, I am originally from Bosnia and Herzegovina. I'm 30 years old. I uh, currently live in Wellington, Florida. Uh, currently, I'm a tennis coach, a head pro of Palm Beach Polo Country Club. And outside of that, I also run my own business. Most importantly, I'm a mom of two amazing boys, a three-year-old and a one-year-old and the wife of my amazing husband, Attila, that is my support in anything I do. Um, and I'm really, really excited to share some parts of my story and my life. So I will start with first um, how I started playing tennis. My dad uh, was diagnosed with cancer when I was six and all of the doctors back home in Bosnia told him that he only has a few more months to live and they sent him to Germany because the treatments and everything was better there. They sent him there and he did the chemo and he did everything there and thank God he's healthy, he's alive now. But while he was there, uh, there was a woman that was in the hospital with him. She had two daughters. She just had bought them two rackets and uh, to play tennis. They were not interested. So one day she asked him, hey, Dennis, do you want to take these two rackets to your kids back home? At the time I was six, turning seven. And my dad called me and asked me if I wanted to um, play tennis. And at the time I didn't even know what tennis was. So I'm like, sure, let's do it, why not? And they told me since they brought the racket home, I had a racket and the ball and I just wanted to play with it the whole time. I was bouncing it on the, I was bouncing the ball on the racket. I was playing. I was really, really having a good time. And they started sending me to group lessons. Uh, at the time, my parents were really working a lot. I lived in a small city, so they would just let me go by myself. I walked to the tennis courts. I would have tennis lessons, you know, with other kids in the group. Never took it really that seriously until one day, probably a year later. Uh, my coach at the time, they, he called my parents and he was like, your kid is talented, you need to do a little bit more. So they started to uh, take me to some privates, they um, started sending me to some tournaments and I was really talented from the beginning because when I was nine already, I played a tournament in Croatia, Smirkla Ball, and uh, Ayla Tomljanovic and myself um, we got to go to America to play a little mode to represent Europe. So we were um, in Houston, we played against America and we won. So I remember bringing a big trophy back home. Um, it was a huge, huge deal for somebody from a small country, from a small place to, to accomplish that. And from then on, really tennis became my life. My parents, everything they put in, everything they they did they put in my tennis really from the beginning it was tennis 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 and you know they didn't know anything about tennis at the time they never played tennis they have experience so they just followed as much as they could and because i was from undeveloped country uh, thankfully i had some support because of my results from itf I got to go to some training camps, some tournaments that was paid for. Um, I was very, um, you know, I mean, it, it was great. It was great. But then when I was around 16, I was training in Spain in an academy. And over there also, it was, it was paid by the ITF. So that was great. I went when I was 16, I was in Spain. I went with one of the coaches there and played one of my first professional tournaments and I won it as a 16 year old. And then I went to Australian Open Juniors and I got injured. My arm started hurting bad and then I had a surgery there in Spain. My recovery took a little long. So for me to come back was really, really hard 
and at that time at that period of my life i feel like it was very crucial because it was either to go to college or go pro to get more sponsorships my, my parents wanted to play it safe because i was very injured all the time i was prone to injuries they're like okay at the time i was getting a lot of offers from universities long story short i decided to go to baylor uh, it was a great school great facilities um, at the time they were top 10 and ca and i knew some friends already there so i'm like okay i will go there but deep inside i really didn't want to go to college all i wanted to do is play tennis so then i was there four years um, in some other episodes i will talk about my college experience because it was really long it was good and bad some good things some bad things that i can talk about if you guys are also interested please you know talk to me write me tell me if you're interested in my college story. Then after that, I uh, when I graduated, I always wanted to play professionally. So I tried play, playing maybe for one and a half more years, but again, lots of injuries, lots of difficulties on the financial side and uh, mental side as well. I did not enjoy tennis anymore. I, um, I was not happy playing and I decided at a pr pretty young age to stop. I can talk about that also more in some other episodes. I want to keep this short and sweet as much as possible. So then I was really lost. I didn't know what to do. I graduated with an accounting degree, but I did not like accounting. I tried some different jobs, but I was not happy. I did not like it. And I feel like a lot of professional players, it doesn't matter if it's tennis or anything, um, any other sport, uh, it's it's my identity, it's who I am, it's what I've done my whole life, it's why I'm here in America. I would not be here if it wasn't for tennis. So what do I do? But I, I got burnt out from tennis, so I never thought of being a coach. I was never like, oh, I really want to be a coach. No, that was not my dream or anything. So it happened one day one of my neighbors asked me to coach her son. And I'm like, sure, let's try. And once I started, um, it started picking up. Other people started asking me and I realized that I actually enjoyed it. I enjoyed coaching. Like maybe this is what I meant. This is meant for me. Slowly one thing after another started. I was getting more clients. I was traveling to tournaments. I was doing a lot. At one point I worked in a country club. I kind of decided what I like to do. I really, really enjoyed it. I found myself at that point and at this point, I'm very happy from, I would rather coach and help somebody impact someone's life than be on the biggest stage on the center court because I was struggling really with tennis on a mental side. I wanted to have a family also, like I said, in the last four years, I've had two kids, I was pregnant, and while all doing all of that, I was also able to build my own business. When I say that I run my own business, as you can see here on my shirt, Tennis with Emma, I started building up my social media around two and a half years ago with, with a purpose of just putting myself out there, just putting my name out there to get more clients, to get more players, and um, at the time it was mostly word of mouth and I built my business up mostly word of mouth. But then I, I saw more potential and I thought I can grow more. So I started doing more social media stuff. And then because of that, my business bloomed even more. Now I run a successful business where I have a few coaches that are working with me. I'm a head pro in a Palm Beach Polo Country Club. And on top of that, I'm running my private clients and private groups, kids and adults, anything. And I really, really love it. It's very rare to have a female coach that is running an academy or is running a club or her own business. When you think about the tennis industry, it's mostly male coaches, which is okay. But I feel like that with my podcast, with what I'm doing, with my social media, my goal is really to empower more female coaches to get out there. I'm not that comfortable speaking in front of the camera. 
<laughs> might not seem like it or on the podcast or doing the podcast but as I'm doing it more and more I feel more and more comfortable I'm working on myself I'm doing uh, different trainings different educations I'm getting myself out there I'm doing things and this is the only way to grow it is by doing things by trying new things why I started podcast is because I want to empower other coaches female or male uh, other other people, other young professionals that are getting out of college or they were professional athletes or very successful athletes in college, they're not sure which route to go now, that it's possible to, when you find something that you love and you really, really put your 100% in, it will pay off. I've been running my own business now for four, five years and I'm so excited. I think the next 10 years are gonna be the best 10 years. Um, I think everything in life happens for a reason. You know, my dad got sick um, and that was a bad thing, but something out of the bad thing, something very, very good came out of it. I would not be in tennis now. I am happy that I came to America to college even if I didn't want to, because I found my passion. I found what I really wanna do. I wanna impact other lives through tennis through my podcast, through my social media, through my different channels. I want to spread the word that it's possible. It's really possible that if I can do it, that you can do it too. I am putting a lot of work in uh, for, for the other moms that are out there that uh, are having a hard time balancing motherhood and their business. It's going to, it's possible. Everything is possible. Um, I love what I do. I love inspiring others. I love helping them on the tennis court and off the tennis court. And uh, I'm very, very blessed and grateful for, for the chance to do what I love. So I'm very excited for this business to grow. I'm excited for the podcast to grow, um, to connect with more people. My goal was also to interview other successful people Around the, around the world. They don't have to be only tennis coaches, tennis players, but they probably will be because it is an amazing tennis podcast. So it will be mostly tennis related, but you can learn a lot from it as well, not just on the tennis side. So I'm excited to meet other people, to have good conversations, deep conversations, talk about life, talk about success, fulfillment, balance, how they juggle everything, because we all struggle with that. We all struggle with that. So I think it's very important to find that balance in life and to find that happiness and to find some passion that drives you every day to get up in the morning, to have a purpose, to really have a purpose for this life. So. I hope with all of these conversations and also some of the podcasts that I'm going to be talking alone, I hope you can get something out of it. I hope you can get inspired. You can get motivated to, to do more. Um, and I am very, very excited for the next episode, for the next um, interview that I already did. It's going to be great. And uh, remember that the episodes come out on every Monday. So make sure to subscribe to notifications so you get a notification when a new episode comes out. And thank you all so much for your support, for listening and for sharing the podcast. It means a lot to me. And I'm looking forward for more, more and more episodes. Thank you so much and see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and a review. To catch all the latest from me, you can follow me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok at Tennis with Emma. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.